Single-handed sailing is one of the loneliest sports in the world. It's also one of the toughest challenges out there. Over the years, French sailors have dominated the solo sailing circuit, and recently Transworld Sport caught up with one of their current star sailors, Sébastien Joss. Sailing is a mix of the unexpected. It's about knowledge, know-how, and freedom too. You're in a natural element, and you have to be able to understand and master it, but sometimes it can overwhelm you. 41-year-old Joss is amongst those sailors taking part in the 2016-17 edition of the Vendée Globe. Regarded as the pinnacle of ocean racing, it's a non-stop, round-the-world, single-handed yacht race. Established in 1989 and held every four years, the race starts and finishes in the small French town of Les Sables d'Olonne. Now into its eighth edition, the race has been won on every occasion by French sailors, and Ross is aiming to continue that tradition. Taking part in the Vendée Globe is something very special. We're going around the world alone with just five square meters of boat. There is emotion, competition and risk all mixed into one. And that's what makes the race so interesting. Seb began sailing with his father on the waters of his hometown of Nice. Possessing a natural talent, he developed under the tutelage of French sailing greats Alain Gauthier and Christophe Auguin and moved into the world of professional sailing. In 2011, Seb had the offer to skip of the Gitana team, one of sailing's most decorated teams. It meant a move from the southern coast of France to the team's base in Lorient, Brittany, amongst the old submarine pens of World War II. Having already participated in the Vendée Globe on two occasions, Seb will be attempting to win the race for the first time in the months ahead. Gitana team manager Cyril Dardashti has helped put together one of the fastest monohull yachts in the race's history. They've named her Edmond de Rothschild, and she flies. With the foils, the advantage is that the boat is completely lifted on the sides, which makes them more exposed, mostly when we go over 70 degrees to the wind. So the boat really stands on its foils and accelerates incredibly quickly. The advantage can be an increase of at least two to three knots, depending on the conditions and the wind speed. The boat is one of six new generation foiling Imoca 60s that hope to win the Vendée Globe. The concept is one that will allow the sailors to sprint across the flatter waters of the Atlantic Ocean down towards the notorious Southern Ocean. It's predicted that days will be shaved off the record time for the race. Having to live aboard a boat that can top speeds of over 30 knots, Seb does have a worry about life during the race. I'm not too concerned about going to the Southern Ocean with the foils. However, I know it will be mentally difficult because the boats are noisy and uncomfortable. The Gitana team has one of the most experienced sailing sponsors behind them. The Rothschild family has been at the forefront of boat design for the last 140 years. That tradition can be seen in the back catalogue of impressive yachts they've funded and developed over the years. Whilst he competes in the Vendée, the team will be busy building the vessel for Seb's next adventure. It's a giant 32-metre foiling trimaran. It's a new concept in the offshore multi-hull circuit, and it's one that the technical team are doing all they can to understand. The new and difficult thing with these boats is trying to make them fly in open sea, in the ocean, on the waves. We're mainly working on the concept of the foils being able to resist the ocean conditions and being more stable. 
At the Americas Cup, for example, the foils are not stable without electronic systems. But during an around-the-world attempt, we can't afford to have a boat which isn't stable. This three-hull giant will be ready next July. It's being built with the sole purpose of smashing solo and crewed sailing records. If it's like it is on the plans, then the boat should be fast and fun to sail. Having a large flying boat like this one doesn't happen every day, and we've never seen it before. It is a big challenge. I'll tell you next year if we've succeeded in building a fun boat or a dangerous one. Seb's support team will not be the only ones who he'll leave behind during the Vendée Globe. He'll also be away from his wife Caroline and their two-year-old son Evan. It's no fun when he's not around. We don't want to live alone, just the two of us. I'd rather the three of us all live together. We don't really like to say goodbye to each other, but we know that within half an hour of saying goodbye, we'll be on the phone to each other. I don't really like to go to the race departures or arrivals, because that's his territory. It's not an easy environment for either me or Ivan. With the speed of Edmond de Rothschild, coupled with his experience at her helm, Seb is one of the favourites out of the 29 skippers to win the Vendée Globe. I think that Sebastian is one of the favourites because he is very involved in what he does. He also knows what he is capable of achieving. He's very resilient and he never gives up. And that's important because the Vendée Globe is a marathon, not a sprint. More people have entered the vacuum of space than circumnavigated the planet non-stop, single-handed. Sébastien Joss has done all he can to be prepared for one of the world's toughest physical and mental challenges. The departure from Les Sables de Lons is really intense because there are so many people there. When it's getting difficult, we have to think about something else listen to music, or eat some of our favourite foods. Sometimes we have to escape in our minds from the boat. We think about our family and think about what's happening at home. We wish Seb well on his quest to win one of sailing's most prestigious prizes.